alive and he'll give the more information. Arun, just to give us some more information about this, because today the Prime Minister is uh, going uh, to inaugurate the three testing lab of ICMR in Noida, Mumbai and Kolkata. What is the update you have? Well, that's right. Uh, now, uh, the idea is to create a robust health infrastructure and the testing facility in the entire country. And in that regards, today, in a short while from now, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, uh, via video conferencing, will be inaugurating the three uh, testing facilities, or primarily throughput testing facilities, one in Noida, one in the western part in Mumbai, and another in the eastern part in Kolkata. So idea is uh, to ramp up the testing facilities. As of now, when we talk about the testing facilities or the testing in our country, I mean, close to 1.6 crore testings have been done so far. And as of now, we are testing close to half a million tests per day. But now India is targeting to test uh, close to 1 million tests per day. So that's what India is targeting. So this throughput testing facilities, uh, in simple terms, primarily means, uh, Kiran, uh, that uh, a single machine can ramp up the testing uh, uh, samples so that uh, more and more testing can be done, or the multiple testing machines can be clubbed together or to increase the size of testing that can be done uh, together. So this is something which we call as throughput testing facilities. And when these testing facilities will be you know, uh, uh, operational in Noida, uh, in uh, Mumbai, and in Kolkata, so in the eastern part, in the western part, and of course, in the northern part, this will, of course, ramp up the testing facilities that India is looking for. So India is working on, on a two-tier strategy. On one side, creating a proper healthcare infrastructure, that means uh, uh, providing with better healthcare uh, equipments uh, like, uh, or primarily uh, the, the uh, equipments like PPA kits, and primarily, of course, the N95 masks, uh, for which we are ramping up our productions. Uh, as of now, close to 1.25 crore N95 masks are being uh, manufactured in our country. On the other side, uh, uh, more than one crore PP kits are being manufactured uh, on a monthly basis in our country. So idea is to manufacture all these uh, uh, healthcare equipments uh, uh, for our health workers, for the patients. And on the other side, the testing facility is also being ramped up to, in our country. I mean, um, a close 1,000 labs are already operational. But yes, the focus of our country is to ramp up the testing facilities so that a close to 1 million tests can be done uh, going forward. Because higher the testing ratio, the more you uh, tend to uh, you know, flatten the curve of the COVID. And that's the reason why government is focusing gradually to increase the testing capacities. And in that context only, the throughput testing facilities in Noida, in Kolkata and of course uh, in Mumbai will play an important role in ramping up uh, the testing facilities in our country. Uh, uh, Kiran? Thank you Arun for all those details uh, given us today. Thank you and being on the line we'll, we'll join you later. Now moving to the next story let's now COVID-19 update from is coming from across the country total recoveries from COVID-19 today surpassed 9 lakh mark. With this the recovery rate stands at 63.92 percent in the country. The case fatality rate has further declined to 2.28%. According to the Health and Family Welfare Ministry, a total of 9,17,567 people have recovered in India so far. Presently, the total number of active corona cases in the country is 4,85,114. India achieved a remarkable feat today by performing more than 5 lakh tests of coronavirus samples in one day. Indian Council of Medical Research said that a record of 5,15,472 tests of coronavirus samples were conducted by the various laboratories within 24 hours. More than 1 crore 80 68 lakh tests have been conducted in the country so far, starting from less than 100 tests per day. A multiple fold increase in a few months was made possible by dedicated teams of research institutions, medical colleges, testing laboratories, ministries, airlines, and postal services. In the last 24 hours, 5,15,472 samples were tested. Total test conducted till now stands at 1 crore 68 lakh 6,803. Now moving on to the next story, Union Minister of Railways, Piyush Goel and External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar flagged off 10 diesel locomotives that are being handed over by Indian Railways to Bangladesh Railways through video conferencing. 
Indian Railways has modified the locos to suit the maximum height restrictions in Bangladesh. It would provide improved train operations within Bangladesh Railways and further strengthen the partnership between both railways. These locomotives will be useful in handling the growing freight train operations between India and Bangladesh. To suit the Bangladesh Railways requirement and ensure the usability of these locomotives, they have been modified to suit your conditions. We have made huge strides forward in our respective efforts at achieving development and growth. India and Bangladesh have come a long way in the last few years. Our bilateral relationship today is at its very best. Emphasizing on India-Bangladesh cooperation, Minister for External Affairs S. J. Shankar said that two countries are examples of friendly neighborhood relationship. He added that India is committed for the development of Bangladesh. Very few countries in the world share such close fraternal ties as those of ours. Our partnership today stands out as a role model in the region for good neighborly relations. India remains a committed development partner of our uniquely concessional lines of credit of close to $10 billion is the largest that India has extended to any country. These projects will help in the infrastructure development of Bangladesh. The External Affairs Minister also highlighted that the COVID-19 pandemic has not slowed down India-Bangladesh cooperation. In 2019, trade between the two nations crossed the 1 billion mark. Ongoing COVID pandemic has not slowed down the pace of our overall cooperation. The signing of the second addendum to the protocol on inland water transit and trade in May 2020 has increased the number of protocol routes from 8 to 10 and the number of ports of call from 6 to 11, besides including two extended ports of call. The successful completion of the trial run of the container cargo from Kolkata to Agartala through Chattogram is indeed a landmark development as it not only reinvigorates our traditional waterway connections but also brings mutual economic benefits. The first five Rafale fight jets took off today from France and they are expected to reach India on 29th July. Made with cutting-edge technology, the aircraft looks absolutely sleek. It has been aptly termed as beauty and the beast. The five fighter jets will be operationalized in Ambala Air Force in the 17 Squadron. Indian Ambassador to France, Javed Ashraf, was present to see off the pilots. The first five Rafale fighter jets today took off from France to reach India on July 29th. The five Rafale jets piloted by Indian Air Force pilots were seen off by India's ambassador to Paris, Javed Ashraf, who had earlier interacted with the pilots and crew and wished them a safe journey. Air Force pilots tell us that uh, these are extremely uh, swift, nimble, versatile and very deadly aircraft. Uh, you might call them, they are both beauty and beast. Uh, they are superb flying machines being flown by the best pilots in the world. This is uh, going to add a great deal of strength to our air power and defense preparedness, but it is also a powerful symbol of uh, the strategic partnership between India and uh, France. These Rafale fighter jets will cover a distance of 7,000 kilometers from Marignac in France to Ambala Air Force Base in India. There will be a brief stopover in UAE and the five supersonic jets will be refueled mid-air too. In Ambala, they will be operationalized on 29 July in 17 Squadron. Armed with Meteor and Scalp missiles, they give teeth and an edge to India over her adversaries. As per the contract signed in 2016, there are more than 10 customizations that India wanted that have been added as part of the weapons package. The SAW handed over the first Rafale fighter jet to India in October last year. Defense Minister Rajnath Singh also flew aboard one. Nandita Dagas report, DD News. And Nandita Dagar, our colleague, is joining uh, live and giving more details on the Rafale induction in Indian Army. 
Yeah, Nanita, just uh, let us know the five uh, uh, Rafal uh, aircraft in, uh, induction in Indian Air Force is going to give a go good, you know, a boost to the Indian Indian Air Force. And how, uh, in what perception do you see that it's going to uh, give a great security to Indian border and its strategy and its safety too? Yes, hi Kiran. Uh, this uh, these Rafals actually are going to uh, give India an edge over its adversaries because they are armed with meteor and scalp missiles. Now these missiles are uh, the ones which are beyond visual range. Means uh, a pilot uh, in the cockpit cockpit of the Rafal need not even sight the enemy's jet and can fire missiles over that, bring down another jet in a dogfight. Also, uh, they have they these uh, these are armed with scalp missiles, which are bunker busters, tank busters, which means that the uh, they completely obliterate uh, tanks and uh, other structures on the ground if need be, uh, because uh, in the air to ground firing role. Also, uh, Kiran, these uh, are ha the, uh, these Rafals have a capability of uh, high altitude takeoff. Their engines are capable of that, which means that uh, play, uh, from places like uh, the Leh Airbase or any other airbase in Ladakh, these um, Rafal jets can take off in very high altitude and very thin atmosphere, less uh, very sparsely uh, uh, sparsely air or very thin uh, density of uh, air. Thirdly, it's very few countries apart from France and India, uh, mainly Qatar and Egypt. They are the ones who have who are flying the Rafals, and this is an extremely uh, uh, high technology, very very modern, the latest of all the fighter jets. So yes, we we have an edge over adversaries. Uh, they have taken off uh, from Merignac in France today, seen off by the uh, by our ambassador to Paris, and they will be landing in India on 29th. Of course, they will be joining the 17th. Uh, number 17 squadron at Ambala and uh, uh, last year, uh, four years after the, uh, in 2016 when the contract was signed, four years after that, it's a really exciting day for Indians uh, because they have taken off for India and they are to arrive in India soon. Yes, Kiran? Thank you so much, Nanita, for all those details. Thank you. Now moving on to the next story, the Supreme Court today allowed the Rajasthan Assembly Speaker to withdraw his appeal against the High Court's order, asking him to defer till July 24th the disqualification proceedings against Sachin Pilot and 18 Congress MLAs. Senior advocate Kapil Sibal, appearing for Speaker, told the Apex Court that the Rajasthan High Court has passed a fresh order on Friday and they were waiting the legal options. The High Court had ordered on Friday maintenance of status quo on disqualification notice issued by the Speaker to 19 dissident Congress MLAs, including Sachin Pilot. In another development, Rajasthan Governor Kalraj Mishra returned to Ashok Gehloth led government a cabinet note seeking an assembly session and sought additional information. This is the second time that the governor has returned the proposal and sought clarification from the state government. The cabinet had sent a revised proposal to the governor for calling the assembly session from July 31st on Saturday. A day after he returned the gov government first proposal. The Rajasthan High Court has dismissed BJP MLA Madan Dilawar's writ petition questioning the Speaker's inaction on his complaint against the merger of six BSP MLAs with the Congress. The petition was filed on Friday and was taken up for hearing by the Court on Monday. The High Court dismissed the petition as the Speaker had passed the order on Dilawar's complaint. The lover had filed the complaint to the Speaker in March seeking disqualification of the legislator. In the writ petition on Friday, he challenged the inaction of the Speaker for not taking decision on his complaint. Earlier, the Bahujan Samaj Party has issued a whip to six Rajasthan Assembly.